Hello and welcome once again. This is Jennifer McGuire and I'm thankful you're here. Today I have a video that I shot many, many months ago and I'm just getting around to sharing it. In this video, I'll show you lots of ways to use white pigment ink creatively so that you can get new looks from the cardstock scraps, die cuts and stamps and stencils that you already have. Many of these are basic techniques, but things that are a good reminder of how a white pigment ink pad can be used in so many different ways. And then I'll also have some more stepped up techniques too. This is one of those videos where I will show you how I make a bunch of cards at once. Each of the cards is slightly different, but I'll give you tips for making many at a time. Many of my cards today feature the My Favorite Things Brilliant Butterfly Stamp Set. I love this set and it will definitely be on my favorites list for 2020. You can see all the different butterflies that you can layer together to form those colorful ones that you see on the left. I also use the coordinating dies for this. I'll start by doing the die cutting and then the stamping to make a bunch of these. Since I'm starting with die cutting and I can die cut a bunch at once, I'm also using the My Favorite Things Happy Hummingbirds. I ended up only using this on a couple of cards, but I have leftovers for later. I wanted to show you the stamp set. There are beautiful sentiments in this also. I'll use those sentiments many times throughout this video. And by the way, that's one of the things that helps me decide if I will buy a stamp set is the sentiments included, because oftentimes you can use them with different cards. I'm also using the My Favorite Things Main Squeeze stamp set. These also have some nice simple sentiments, but I'll use some of the lemons also. So I have these three stamp sets and the coordinating dies. I'm starting by die cutting with the coordinating dies a bunch of die cuts from white cardstock. In my craft room, I keep a bunch of pre-cut four and a quarter by five and a half inch white cardstock. I'm positioning a bunch of the coordinating dies from the three sets I showed you onto white cardstock pieces. So I'm putting as many dies as I can on one piece. Then I'm putting a piece of purple tape over it to hold them together. This way I can run all of these through my die cut machine at once. So I can put both of these pieces of cardstock onto a cutting plate and run them through. Here's another example of taking more of those coordinating dies, putting them close together on a piece of cardstock and taping them in place. This way, instead of just die cutting one or two at a time, I have a bunch of them ready to go so I can make a bunch of cards at once or save them for later. Now notice my dies are still taped together. All I do is I pop out the die cuts, take the taped dies that are all together and lay it onto another piece of white cardstock. So you can quickly go through and die cut a bunch of white die cuts at once, then do the stamping. I find this a wonderful way to make a lot of stamped die cuts at once. I continued to do this to make a bunch of cards and then I took one of the negative spaces of each and I'm putting some tape on the back of it so the sticky is facing up in the openings. Now I'm placing this negative space into my Misty stamping tool. This will just be a guide to help me stamp a bunch. Now I recently did a video giving kind of an updated idea for doing this technique and I'll link to that video up here on the top right. I shot this video a long time ago so this is kind of my older way of doing it but it works great. So all I did is pop in one of the white die cuts and line up the stamp. So I'm lining up the first layer of all the different butterflies that you see in that negative piece. Now I have all of them lined up and I'm stamping with my first color. I decided to use Pink Fresh Studio inks today because the colors are beautiful, but you could use any inks you want for this. So after I've stamped those, I can clean off my stamps with a dry cloth, take out my die cuts, and put in my next set of white die cuts. Remember I said I die cut a bunch of them. And this time I'll use a different color. This time I'm using Altenew ink. I really just went through my collection looking for the colors that I liked. So now I have some blue butterflies, butterflies started. I'll continue to do this with other colors too. Next, I position the second layer of this stamp set into my Misty stamping tool, and I'm stamping that with a different color. One of the nice things about this particular stamp set is it's not really a layering set, but more of a building set, and it doesn't have to be lined up just right to get a good result. After doing the second color, it's time to go through and stamp the black outline images. I'm using Altenew Obsidian Black Ink, but any black ink will work. And look at the fun detail that adds. 
You could instead color those wings if you wanted to to make colorful butterflies, but I found this to be super fast. So I continued this process until all of my butterflies were stamped. And remember, I still do have white die cuts of the lemons and the hummingbirds for later. But look at all the butterflies that I have ready now. So I can make a bunch of cards with these and you'll see them throughout this video. I just wanted to show you that's one of the ways that I make a lot of cards at once. It's kind of like mise en place when you're cooking, you get all your pieces ready and then you assemble the cards all at the end. These butterflies are beautiful and you can even add detail to them with a white gel pen or gems. Now that my focal point images are done, it's time to create the background pieces using my white pigment ink techniques. There are many great white pigment inks on the market. The one I reach for the most is the Hero Arts Unicorn White Pigment Ink. I also like the Simon Says Stamp, Gina K, and Lawn Fawn White Pigment Inks. They're all very similar. I replace this ink pad about once a year so that it stays bright white and full of ink. Okay, let's dive into some of the techniques. One of my favorite is to do inking over layering. This can be done with absolutely any die cuts or punch shapes you have. I'm using the My Favorite Things Grand Greenery dies. You can see the die set there on the left. I die cut it from a bunch of Gina K Lucky Clover cardstock. It's a beautiful green. And I'm gluing them kind of close together on a piece of cardstock of the same color. So basically this will be a tone on tone piece with a little bit of texture with these leaf shapes. Now I could have covered this entire piece with the die cuts, but I ended up trimming it in half so that I could save a little bit of time. It would have been smarter to cover the whole thing, cut it in half and have two pieces, but I just did one. Now I could leave this piece as is, but a way to step it up and make it look even more impressive is to apply white pigment ink over it. I have a blending brush here that I use only for white pigment ink because I want it to stay bright white. And I am picking up ink with the blending brush and rubbing it gently over our textured background. What happens is the raised die cuts pick up a lot of the white pigment ink, the background picks up a little bit, and there's kind of a halo of dark green around the die cuts. So it really makes the background stand out more and adds a bit of interest. So here's what it looks like after it dries beautiful color and I'll turn that into a card later. I'm going to start by doing all of our backgrounds first. Okay another thing you can do with white pigment ink that's easy is to add it over texture that you create with embossing folder or embossing with a die. So I'll create one example of each and let's first start with using an embossing folder. Embossing folders are inexpensive and a great way to do fun techniques in your card. So I have my die cut machine here and an embossing folder from Sunny Studio. You could use any embossing folder or any die cut machine. Just follow the instructions with your machine. I'm running it through my machine with a piece of Hero Arts Arctic cardstock, which is a beautiful dark color. And now I have a blending tool with white pigment ink that I'm run, rubbing over the surface. If you go lightly, you'll keep the ink just on the raised areas. But if you apply a little heavier like I am, you'll get some white ink in the background and some on the raised areas, just creating a soft cloudy look. Either way works. Here's what it looks like after it dries. Such a beautiful way to add some interest to that embossing foldered background. Remember, you could use the back side of this with inking too if you wanted. Okay, now let's do an example where I use a background die to create an impression on cardstock. So I have my Spellbinders Tan Embossing Mat, which is a flexible piece that allows us to make an impression with the die instead of cutting it. I put down my cardstock and then the Altenew Spring Shower Cover Die. I have my embossing mat underneath that. I'm running that through my die cut machine. And by the way, you can do this with most machines out there. What happens is the die makes an impression in the cardstock instead of cutting it. And look at that beautiful impression. Both sides are lovely. So I have another ink blending tool here with some white pigment ink, and you can do a light amount if you want or a heavy amount. I kind of went in between. I want that cloudy look. So you can see what it looks like on one side, but I like the other side better. This is the side where the impression is sticking up, and I'm just lightly applying the white pigment ink with my blending tool. I find a blending tool, a flat foam tool, works best for this because it stays on the raised areas only and check out that beautiful result. So think about it, you could use either side of this, but I definitely like this side better. 
After inking any of these pieces, I do heat set it with a heat gun just to make sure that my ink doesn't smear because this is a pigment ink, so it takes time to dry. Okay, another idea for using white pigment ink is to do offset stamping. I actually recently did a video on this technique and I'll link to it here if you missed it. For my first example, I'm using Altenew Dainty Swiss Dot Stamp Set. This is one of my all-time favorite stamp sets. I've used it many times. I stamped this with a kind of uh, coral color on coral cardstock. Now I'm removing my stamp and shifting it. I can look through the stamp here and see the dots already stamped and line it up so that next time I stamp it, they're in between. So this time I'm using white pigment ink. So you can see how I end up with white pigment ink dots in between my coral colored dots, which really creates a fun look of pattern paper. Now with this example, I don't overlap my stamping. So you can see the dots are in between each other, but you can get really fun looks by overlapping. This one overlaps a bit, but if you wanna see a really impressive way of doing offset stamping, check out that other video. Here I have the My Favorite Things Circle Celebration background stamp. I have my piece of cardstock in my stamping tool here, and I'm stamping with Lagoon ink from Altenew. So this will be a tone on tone, very subtle. I could have gone with the darker ink if I wanted to. Now I've wiped my stamp clean, and I'm going to move my cardstock over in my Misty stamping tool. You can move it as much as you want or as little as you want, it doesn't matter. And now I'm stamping the same stamp with white pigment ink, and it'll create a fun pattern. Again, be sure to check out my offset stamping video that I just posted recently. I did this video before that one, so I just wanted to remind you to check that out if you want more ideas of offset stamping. Now my white pigment ink was a little bit heavier in some areas than others, so I just dab it with a dry cloth and check out that fun background pattern. Okay, my next white pigment ink technique idea is another favorite of mine, and this is to do an ombre background. I started with a piece of dark colored cardstock where I stamped with the matching ink to it, so you can barely see it there. Now I'm taking that same matching ink and using a blending brush to apply a bit of that color towards one side. So I'm basically making this edge a little bit darker. Now on the opposite ed edge, I'll be using a blending brush for white pigment ink. And again, this brush is designated just for white ink. So you'll see I'm putting it heavy towards the edge and it blends out towards the middle. Every once in a while I kind of rub it with a dry cloth just to make it blend better and also remove some of it. I don't want it to be too bright white. And then check it out. You have the dark on one edge, the light on the other edge, and in the middle is the true cardstock color. And it makes it look like an ombre piece very quickly. And you can see that stamped background there. So I could have stamped it afterwards, but this time I just decided to stamp it before. After heat setting it, check out that gorgeous look. So this would be one that you could use with any kind of stamp or stencil. You could skip the stamping and stenciling if you prefer. My next three background examples use different variations of a resist technique. So you can try any of these at all with any stamps that you have. So I'm starting with some pieces of cardstock here, just different ones that I grabbed. It doesn't matter what color, although I do think darker, more vibrant colors work best. Now I'm stamping the My Favorite Things Dandelion Greenery stamp set. It's a small set, fantastic images, and I'll use it again later. I'm stamping this with Versamark ink onto my background, so it'll just get a little bit darker there. I then am sprinkling on some clear embossing powder and setting it aside. I'll do the same on another piece of cardstock, stamp it, add the embossing powder, set it aside. I'll do this onto all of my background pieces, and then I will heat set them all at once. I find when I heat set them all at once, my gun is nice and hot, and it takes less time. So that's one of the ways that I speed up mass producing with uh, any kind of heat embossing. Okay, now I'm putting the papers back in and arranging more of the images from the same stamp set. So basically, I'm creating backgrounds using those images. If you want to save time, you could definitely use a background stamp for this clear embossing, but I loved how these turned out with the individual images close together. Okay, so let's start doing some of the different techniques. The first one is a soft embossed resist. Now for this, very simple, all you need to do is apply white pigment ink with a blending brush or any blending tool 
over the background in different areas. I really like using a blending brush with my white pigment ink. It allows me to blend it out and smooth it out a little bit better, but I do like to come with a dry cloth also and kind of buff it. So what happens is the clear embossing that we did resists the white pigment ink, so it'll stay a nice dark green under that. But then we get that cloudy white around it. And look at the beautiful result. You could do another layer of white pigment ink if you prefer. It doesn't matter. It depends on how much of that cloudy look you want. Now when I put this white pigment ink over the embossing, even if I wipe it off, the embossing looks a little bit cloudy. So what I do is I reheat set it, which makes the embossing shiny again, so that it really stands out. And there you can see the final results when it's dry. It really is a great way to give a new look to a tone-on-tone -tone embossed background. Okay, this resist technique is to use resist and a stencil. So I'm using the Honey Bee Polka Dot Stencil Set. I just chose one of them. And I have my clear heat embossed background. I'll tape the stencil on just to make sure it stays put. You could use a spray here if you want, but I try not to use sprays unless I have to. I'm applying a very heavy uh, uh, application of white pig pigment ink over the stencil and then wiping away the excess. You could do less if you want a softer look. It's totally up to you. Now when I remove this, you can see some of the white pigment ink kind of pooled along the edge of the stencil. All I do is dab that with a dry cloth to make it kind of even out. So I can remove my tape and heat set this to bring back the shine to the clear embossing. And there we have another version of Resist, such a cool way to create a fun pattern background. My next embossed Resist has a more bold look to it. It's similar to the first one, but we're gonna add more dimension to it or the look of dimension. I'm first using an Altenew ink that is a little bit darker than my background. And I'm applying little bits of color here and there with a blending brush. So already you've got this kind of um, variation of color on your background and our clear embossing is resisting that darker ink we put on top. In some of the open areas where we didn't put the darker yellow, I'm applying some white pigment ink. I'll buff it every once in a while to make sure I like the look and then I can apply more if I want to. So we just have all of this yellow variation. We have light yellow, medium yellow, and dark yellow. And then we have that clear heat embossed image that resisted the ink. So it's just a fun way to step up your resist background. Okay, my next technique is to do some soft stamping on an inked background. This is a great technique for simple cards. So in the center of a piece of white cardstock, I'm using a blending brush to build up just a little floating bit of color in the center. I start very soft with this light application with the brush, and then I build the color up so it looks like the color just fades towards the edges. This is Altenew Sea Breeze ink, which is beautiful. And then I put a little bit of Mountain Mist on top to make it a little more minty. Okay, so once I have that little halo of color there, I decided to do some white stamping on top. This is from the greenery or the uh, Dandelion Greenery stamp set that I used at the beginning of this video. So I'm using white pigment ink to stamp this. Now that's a light background and I'm stamping white on it. So I'm going to stamp it a few times using my stamping tool just to make it more vibrant. So this is just adding a little bit of interest onto that little bit of color that we have on the background. If you like creating simple cards, even one layer cards, you could use this technique. And once again, I'll finish this card later in this video. Okay, my next idea for using white pigment ink is to soften patterns. Say you have a busy pattern paper, you can soften it with white pigment ink. In this case, I am going to create my own pattern paper using some scraps, which you've seen me do in videos many times. I'll link to one of those videos on the top right. I just have a piece of cardstock that I've covered with adhesive, and now I have these strips of cardstock from my scrap drawer, and I'm just applying them. Now, I do this in a diagonal because it's easier to keep them straight, as opposed to going horizontal or vertical. Now, once I have this done, I found this was a little bit bright for my card, a little too bold, so I can soften it using white pigment ink. I ended up making two pieces like this, one for this technique and one for the next one. So you can see what they look like here. Now on this one, I'm applying a pretty generous layer of white pigment ink. So you could do an ombre look if you wanted to. You can see how it softens one edge there. 
or you could cover the entire thing. So say you have a leftover inked background that you created and it was just too loud for your card, you can make it softer by putting some white pigment ink on top. The more white pigment ink you put on top, the softer it'll get. This works great for uh, pattern paper also. So there you can see a comparison to the inked and uninked. Now the other scrap piece that I had there, I'll use to demonstrate a splatter technique. Believe it or not, white pigment ink is one of the best things you can use for white splatter on your cards. I have my scrap cardstock piece there without any ink on it, and I'm taking my white pigment ink pad and pressing it onto my glass work surface. I'm adding some water to it and mixing it with my brush, and then I will splatter that or flick it onto my background. If you want your splatter to be bright white, use less water. If you want it to be kind of transparent white, use more water. So you can kind of control the result that you get. So that bit down there on the bottom has less water, so it'll be even more vibrant. You can put a little splatter or a lot. I went for a lot here, but that's a great way to create wonderful white splatter for your cards. I find that works better than anything else that I've used, and it uses an ink pad many of us already have. So I heat set that, and there you see the new look to that piece. And there is a comparison, the splatter, and the one we softened with the white pigment ink on the right. Now one of the most basic techniques that you can do with white pigment ink is to use it over a stencil. However, I think many of us forget to do this technique, so I wanted to be sure to share it. I have this beautiful flora and fauna floral stencil, lots of detail to it. I'm taping a bright cardstock behind it, and then applying white pigment ink over it using a blending brush. Now I'm kind of tapping the ink on and spreading it around to try to get as heavy as I can onto my background. And there you can see the beautiful results that you get. So don't forget to use white pigment ink on colored cardstock. It's a great way to use up scraps and get a completely different soft look. Okay, now that we have some focal point images ready and our backgrounds using the white pigment ink techniques, let's create some cards. I have lots of examples to share for you because again, I was mass producing that day and I'll show you some tips along the way for making the most of the pieces that you created to make as many cards as you can. On many of the background technique examples I just showed you, I made a full size piece, but instead of using that full size piece on one card, I often cut that into two pieces so I could create two cards. So you'll notice that many of my examples today have our background technique just on the top or the bottom, and the rest of the card is white space. So here you can see I'm getting two cards from one background, gluing them on the top of one card and the bottom of the other. And these are four and a quarter by five and a half. Since this is a pretty simple card, I want to add a little more interest to it. So I like to add thin strips of cardstock right along the edge of the inked piece. But to add extra interest to those thin strips of cardstock, I'm using these reverse confetti edge essential dies. Now this is an older die set and I'll link to another option that is similar. But basically any border die that has faux stitching or little dots would work. So instead of just putting a thin strip of cardstock that is solid, you can add detail to it like I'm doing here. I didn't do this on all of my examples, but I do think it makes a big difference to kind of step up your simple card design. And doing that little border along your inked piece really gives a kind of finishing touch. Another thing you can do is a thin strip of a specialty cardstock, such as glitter paper or foil paper. For this, I used a faux stitching on my little border strip. And remember, those little strips are great to find in your scrap drawer. Okay, now for this example, I did a diagonal cut for my background. Remember that green background piece was a big one, five and a uh, half by four and a quarter, and I cut it at a diagonal so I could have two different pieces to put on two different cards. With these, I wanted to show you how I added dimension behind my die cuts. So see the butterfly here? There's some dimension behind it. What I did is use the same coordinating die to die cut from white craft foam, which has dimension and then I glued it behind my stamp die cut. That way when I add it to the card, it'll stand up a bit. Now with this one, I decided not to use the border dies on my little cardstock strips. Instead, I just added a thin black strip, which is a great way to really create a definition. 
And then my next strip is silver glitter cardstock. You can use your little scraps for this and specialty cardstock's perfect. Just run your liquid adhesive along the edge and then add it right onto your card. Now I'm adding my butterfly die cut that has the foam on the back right on top. And with using liquid adhesive, you can kind of wiggle it around to get the perfect position. While that dries, I wanted to show you something that I did with many of my butterflies to give it a little more interest, and that is to add little dots with a white gel pen and with a black pen. So you can really step up your outline images by adding those little details. Now I can't draw, so I just did little dots and that's all that was needed. All right, let's finish off all of these cards. So for this one, I just added a hello sentiment to the card on the right. That is from the main squeeze lemon stamp set that I showed you earlier. You can see how I did a diagonal design there with the black cardstock strip, which is my favorite to add, and then a little silver glitter cardstock. On the card on the left, I stamped Just Because, and the Just Because sentiment is from this Concord and Ninth Lots to Say stamp set. I've used this many times in videos before, and I'll use it again throughout this video. Lots of small, simple sentiments that are great to add just about anywhere. Okay, these next ones where I created the background with white ink over a stencil, very simple designs. I used a silver glitter cardstock strip along the edge, and I used those reverse confetti edge essential dies to create the little dotted pattern to the pink strip. The sentiment on this one is from the My Favorite Things Beautiful Blooms kit that is, I think, discontinued from My Favorite Things, but I encourage you to look through your older stamp sets. A lot of times those older stamp sets that we haven't used in a while have a sentiment that would be a perfect fit on whatever card you're doing. The other card uses the Sweet and Sassy Sentimental Word Fetty stamp set. They have Word Fetty stamp sets in many different themes, but this one has a lot of great universal uh, sentiments. And I like that it has a more casual look to it. So it works with many different card designs. And the Thinking of You is a perfect fit between those wings. I'll be using this stamp set many times in this video. Okay, here's our yellow cards where we did an embossed resist with dark yellow ink and white ink. I cut these pieces on a diagonal to create two cards. I use gold glitter cardstock and black cardstock strips to create that little bit of definition. I also added yellow gemstones to the uh, wings of the butterfly for a little bit of sparkle. The Thinking of You is from the Word Fetty stamp set that I showed you just a moment ago, and the Hello is from the Main Squeeze Lemon stamp set. That hello is the perfect size to kind of squeeze into any tight area on a card. Next we have the purple cards, which you saw me work on before. The card on the left, I used a Thinking of You sentiment from a Simon Says Stamp pre-printed sentiment strip set. So they're pre-printed, all you have to do is cut them out and add them to the card. For the card on the right, I used that Sweet and Sassy Sentimental Word Fetty stamp set. So you can see I added gemstones to the card on the left and black card or black dots to the card on the right. And I used those die cut border strips. On my next card, you see our example where we did that little cloud of blue ink and then did white stamping on top. I love how it makes that white stamping look like it fades off into the white area on the edge of the card. The Just Because sentiment is from the Concord and Ninth Lots to Say stamp set, the small one that I showed you earlier. So the focus of this card is on that butterfly and that simple sentiment. In a few of my next cards, I use the Concord and Ninth Mini Spirograph Turnabout Stamp Set. I just use that simple, bold, hello sentiment. So I encourage you to dig through your old stamp sets like I did here today to find the sentiment that would look best with whatever card you're using. Don't feel like you have to use whatever sentiment comes with the stamp set. So here I did my little splatter piece on the bottom and I gave it a defined edge with black cardstock strip, added my butterfly and a simple hello sentiment above it. This is a quick design that allows you to use up scraps that you may have, use any focal point image and any sentiment. Here's another example using one of the peach butterflies that I created. On this one, I used my offset stamping background piece on the bottom of my note card, and I used a faux stitched scrap down the center and a piece of silver glitter cardstock. That Thinking of You is from a discontinued stamp set from My Favorite Things. I really like how the pink dots and the white dots in the background match nicely with the focal point image that we used. 
Now my next few cards use this absolutely adorable My Favorite Things Hanging With My Nomi stamp set. This is a big stamp set. I'll use both the images and the sentiments from this. This card uses the other half of that offset dot stamping piece and I use black cardstock strip and a silver glitter cardstock strip. I added my little gnome there that I colored quickly with markers, and then I stamped There's No One Like You right along the border. A quick and simple design that you could use for mass producing. In this case, I didn't make too many because I had to color each of those, but it's a great way to use up those stamps that you've wanted to. Here's another from the gnome set. I stamped, colored, and die cut him. And then I added him to that ombre piece that I put at the top of the card, along with a black and silver glitter cardstock strip. I stamped the sentiment underneath it, and that allowed me to create a quick and simple design with the focus on that image. Here's another ombre background piece that I created, and I added some of the lemons from the main squeeze stamp set. I colored those with Copic markers and cut them out by hand and stamped thank you from the same stamp set. Back to that gnome stamp set, this little guy is so cute. That's the first background we made in this video where we glued green die cuts on a green background and applied white pigment ink over top to make it stand out more. Okay, back to my butterfly cards. Here is the background that we created by making an impression with the die and then applying white pigment ink softly over the raised area. I use the My World is, a be is Better With You In It sentiment, and that's actually from the Gnome stamp set, but you can see it works great with other images also. I'll use that several times throughout the rest of this video. My next card features the My Favorite Things Mother's Day Bouquet stamp set. I really like the images in this one and the unique style of the sentiments. I stamped, colored, and die cut one of the bouquets for this next card. On the background, I used the piece where we used an embossing folder and applied white ink over the raised areas. You can see I have a piece of black and silver glitter cardstock strip right across our inked border. And I stamped Thinking of You, which is from that Hummingbird stamp set that I showed you at the beginning of this video. That stamp set has some beautiful sentiments in it. Okay, my next few cards feature the Concord and Ninth So Pretty sentiment stamp set. I really like that hello style, a little more fancy than a basic hello, and the thinking of you. I also use the Brutus Monroe Flower Doodle. This is such a cool background that would be fun to color, but today I decided just to stamp it with white pigment ink. I didn't show you this technique earlier, but it's one that I think we need to remember. I stamped that background with white pigment ink on pool colored cardstock here, and look at the beautiful look that it gives. I added the butterfly and the cardstock strips, and I stamped that hello on the card on the left from the Concord and Ninth set and filled in the open areas of the letters with a white gel pen. On the card on the right, I added a Simons' stamp sentiment strip that says thinking of you. Those are pre-printed, but you could use any sentiment strip there that you stamp if you prefer. Here's another where I stamped the flower doodle with white pigment ink on colored cardstock. The reason I did some of these cards with white pigment ink stamping onto colored cardstock is I had lots of butterflies left over and I needed to make some quick cards. If you prefer a background that is a little more soft, use a soft color of cardstock and stamp with white pigment ink on it. Both of the sentiments on these cards are from the Concord and Ninth So Pretty stamp set. I also like to use a basic stripe background stamp to do white pigment ink stamping on colored cardstock so it matches perfectly with your image. This is my favorite stripe background stamp. It's from Ink Blot Shop. It's called Simple Stripes. And you can see how we created our own kind of pattern paper that went great with our stamped image using white pigment ink. Now remember at the beginning of the video I showed you a hummingbird stamp set? I stamped on those die cuts and colored them and added them onto this card along with that offset stamping background that we did on dark teal cardstock. So you can see the two-tone stamping there. The You're Amazing stamp is from this Concord and Ninth Simply Said stamp set that I've used many times in videos. Lots of great basic sentiments in there. I have a few more card examples for you. The next one uses the Stamping Village Thinking of You stamp set, which I've used in videos before also. That bold thinking of you on the top right there, I think that works great on a lot of different cards and for a lot of different occasions. So here we have the background that I created by putting soft white pigment ink over our cardstock strip background.
The flowers are from the My Favorite Things Mother's Day bouquet stamp set that I showed you. And then I added a little bit of interest with that silver glitter cardstock strip. You can see how that really brings your focus to the main parts of the card. Now this is a fun card. This one used all the leftover scraps that I had from the different inking backgrounds that we did in this video. So I just glued them together, added some white cardstock strips that are very thin to it also, trimmed it down, and put it on the bottom of the card with a butterfly and simple sentiment. So don't give up on those thin pieces that you have left over of inking or stamping. You can use them together to create a cool card. Now after I completed all these cards, I still had lots of butterflies left over. So I made a few quick cards like this. I added craft foam to the back of each of the butterfly die cuts and then put them on a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. Now the sentiment there is from that hanging with my Nomi stamp set. That sentiment can be used for just about anything. And I have a bunch of these extra cards left over too. Okay, so I hope this inspires you to break out your white pigment ink and use it creatively on your cards. Kind of change up the look of some of the products you already have. If you're interested in the products that I talk about or the videos, they are linked below in my YouTube description. Here in the middle are a link to two of those videos. And also on the top right is a link to my blog where there's much more information. Thanks for sticking with me through this long video. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you again soon.